who plays pro football. Has a cabin up on the mountain by the lake. Said we could use it for the weekend. <laughs> That's Zach McCall. Zach, Gus Witherspoon. You've known some since I saw you. Johnny's dead. I do manage to get around the dance floor, all right? Well, my middle name is Two Left Feet, but uh, if you're game, there's a bar in the village. It's got a live band. Look at that. How's that for a crowd, huh? From here, it looks a little like a carp. My mom's dating Zach McCall. The kids at school go crazy. says that if a person wants something real bad, she can wish for it, or she can aim her nose in the direction of what she wants. Le Petit Chateau. The what? Le Petit Chateau. It's this great French restaurant. Mom says she's been there, and it's très excellent. You're going there with Jeff? Just you and him? No, not Jeff on his own. It's too expensive. His parents are taking us. You're meeting his parents? Too blue. Wear something pink. Make it sound like we're going steady or something. Well, on my soap, meeting a boy's parents is a big deal. Molly, life is not a soap. When it's good, it is. Look, the edge goes to the team's best quarterback, and that's definitely not New York. If you're so sure of yourself, why don't you put something on it? I don't have the heart to steal your money, JR. Yeah, sure, that's a pretty good excuse for a dork. Okay. What do you say to a dollar eighty-five? Are you man enough to put your bike where your mouth is? A bike? <laughs> what about you? What are you going to put up? Uh, I don't know. Say uh, your bike to my video game. JR, that bike was a Christmas gift. Well, so was my video game. So, how about it, Mr. David the Geek? Do you have a deal? Parents make sacrifices for their kids. I know people that lose every single game of Candyland with their kids every single time, and I'm telling you, that's not easy. Well, how many parents get to look back down the road 20 years later and truly say, I am satisfied with the way my kid finished up? Only the lucky ones, Tom. Brand new razor, Gus. Be the slickest shave you ever had. Oh, no. A dull razor has been your trademark. Why change now, Cliff? <laughs> Would you be just as proud as Zach if he had never been a professional football player? Oh, absolutely, Joe. My boy's got a caboose for a heart. He's involved in all kinds of charity work. Uh, talks to youth groups all around the country. The truth is... If Zach hadn't have made it in the pros, it wouldn't have been because of lack of trying. He had grit. The boy is no quitter. Tom, I was just thinking about some of the times he and I spent together up the lake fishing. Yeah, we had some good times up there, Gus. I miss him. I truly do. You didn't sell your cabin. No, we didn't sell it, Gus. We, uh, we rented out some of the time. The truth is, uh, Val and me haven't been there well, more than a few days since uh, Zach started playing pro ball. How much do you get to rent the cabin, Tom? Mm, probably more than you can afford. Yeah, that's that's probably true, all right. However, there's a coffee table there that needs fixing. And as I recall, you used to be a pretty fair country carpenter. Let's see, for fixing that table, that ought to be worth about, what, a three-day weekend? Oh, really? Mm hmm Keys under the flower pot, right near the porch. Ouch. Oh, Molly, dear. Oh, Molly, sweet. You are my friend, but smell your feet. 
<laughs> Come on, Molly, it was funny. Hysterical. It's just a silly assignment. You'll do great. No, I won't. I don't know why, but I'm having trouble with this one. Hi, Grandpa. Hi, Mr. Witherspoon. Everybody come down here. I want to talk to you. What's up? It's a surprise. What's going on, Gus? What happened? Guess who I talked to. Kaplan? Where's your brother? Uh, David! Come in, Mom! Did I miss anything? Guess who I talked to? Boschnickel? <laughs> Tom McCullough. What happened to your cheek? I cut it. Doesn't McCullough's son play pro football? Oh, plays football. Zach McCall's the best quarterback in the entire league. Did it hurt? Didn't hurt. What did he have to say, Gus? Has a cabin up on the mountain, by the lake. Said we could use it for the weekend. Grandpa, I can't go this weekend. I have a date with Jeff. You suit yourself. Grandpa, do they have TV up there? No. Nope. Was there much blood? Very little blood. Do they even have bathrooms? Bushes. Oh. Grandpa, you know, there are some pretty good football games on this weekend, and I'm not sure I really want to miss them. Or couldn't we do it another weekend? Yeah. Nope. It's now or never. Was there a scab? No scab. Well, see, I'm going fishing. You folks suit yourself. Uh, looks like Grandpa's gone. And I'm going to go with Jeff. Hey, Joe. I hear your big surprise blew up in your face. Yeah. Listen, while you're here, make yourself useful. Get the fishing poles and the cooler and the... There's a sleeping bag over there somewhere. We'll load it up. Sure. Come on, Mom. I really don't want to go. Did I say you should go? Well, not exactly in those words, but you are putting my clothes away. Mom, you know you never do that unless you're trying to get me to do something that you want. I better develop some new moves. You're seeing right through me. Well, does Molly want to go? It's not really a matter of want. It's more a matter of should. Mom, it's just that I really don't want to go. I know, honey. I don't want to go either. Gus, you remember back a few months, uh, you and me had a... A little uh, friendly misunderstanding, you know what I mean? <laughs> you mean a fight, don't you? All right, all right, a fight. And uh, is, is it logical to, to assume that you also remember what it was about? All right, remember. I went fishing with Lefkowitz. You didn't get to go, and I guess you figured I could read your mind or something. You want to go fishing now? Yes, actually, I would. <laughs> Good. Good. Thanks a lot. We do so many things on our own, we're never together. You see, we're all going in different directions these days, and we hardly ever see each other. We don't even know each other anymore. Well, Mom, I know my sisters. You can trust me on that one. I can't be a substitute for the whole family, you know. Oh, Joe. I mean, we've talked a lot about women and kids and how hard they are to figure. Yeah. It's going to be great. <laughs> going to be great just to be on the lake just kick back, not anybody to have to explain about outside toilets and poison ivy, too. I mean, it's going to be great. You'll miss a few ball games on television. Now, isn't your family more important than that? You're using guilt. Yes. How am I doing? Well, I guess it's working. Do you suppose that there's any kid in the United States whose mother can't make him feel guilty? Well, I suppose there may be one. But he's probably feeling guilty because he's not feeling guilty. So she's gaining on him. Well, look, it'll be you and the lake and me. I like that, my friend. I like that a lot. Great. You're doing what? Where? With the guys. But what about our date? Well, don't ever call me again. Grandpa! I'm in the kitchen, honey. to go to the cabin still open because I wouldn't walk across the street to see Jeff much less miss a great weekend with my family can I hear that right you're going with us absolutely oh well 
Gus, I am pleased to announce that with a little arm twisting, the entire family has seen the light. So, full speed ahead. <laughs> I can guess see what clothes needs to be washed. I think I'll join you. So what happened with Jeff? Don't ask. He's a creep. Well, it's a big lake. I dreamt I held you in my arms. When I awoke, dear, I was mistaken. So I hung my head and I cried. Well, here we are. Yeah. Well, it's rustic. Everybody out. It's pretty here. I can't wait to go fishing. I hope the water's not cold. Place looks the same to me, Joe. Boy, nice. Mom, what if it's filthy inside? There's all kinds of spiders. Where were the spoons? We'll tough it out. Tough it out. Arthur, goodness gracious. Arthur. Yeah. That's really graceful. Mom. Mom. Don't. What if there's, like, dead animals all in this place? Yeah. We'll go to a motel. Anybody see a key? Oh, yeah, it's right here. Okay, Arthur, move it. Okay, come on. Let me try. <laughs> Look at this oh. place. Wow, it's neat. It's incredible. It's got a fireplace. Oh, Molly. Oh, Molly. Oh, Come on. Look at this. There's trophies. Sorry. Uh, don't break anything. These are football trophies. Oh, a kitchen. Look. I won't have to rub sticks together. <laughs> and a sink. <laughs> and chairs with cushions and dishes. Oh, Molly, look at this big screen TV. Oh, wow. No, we can see the game. It's got a microwave. I can't believe it. It's beautiful. Well, it's, uh, it's called progress, Gus. Tub is big enough for all of us. What do you think you're doing here? This is private property. That's Zach McAuliffe. Right. Now, you've had your cheap thrills. Get out. Zach, Gus Witherspoon. You've grown some since I saw you. Johnny's dead. Right. Now, look, I'm sorry we're barging in on you here, but your dad did tell us we Our could Our dad didn't this. know I was going to be here. In fact, I didn't know I'd be here. I uh, needed to drop out of sight for a while, and well, my agent told me to find a nice, quiet place where cameras and reporters couldn't find me. Look at your place. You don't need a reason to be here. Look, we came for nature, right? We'll just find some place to camp. Oh, well, there's no need for that. There's plenty of room for all of us here. Besides, Dad would kill me if he found out you didn't stay here. Well, thanks for the offer, but... The truth is, I'm only here for a few days, and, well, it's already a little too quiet. I'm going a little stir-crazy. Come on, Grandpa. Can't we stay? D Zach McCullough. Oh, well, just with a spoon. Johnny's wife. You always did have good taste. <laughs> oh, these are my, my daughters, uh, Chris and, and Molly. And uh, my son, David. I'm oh, sorry about scaring you before. I wasn't scared. You know, your dad was like a big brother to me. We had some good times together. You know, when I was growing up, I wanted to be just like him. Looks like you've done pretty well on your own. Ah, a little bit of luck. <laughs> How you doing? It's an honor to meet me. I mean, you. <laughs> it's an honor for me, too, David. Uh, Kaplan. Joe Kaplan. I know you're dead, too, not as long as Gus, but long enough. Uh, I, I've followed your progress in a prose ever since you got there. You know, your short passing game has improved a lot. 
But you should stay in the pocket longer. It seems to me that's the logical thing. Stay more in the pocket. Joe, I don't know. Joe, 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 I don't what? think a fellow wearing a sheet for shorts is interested in your opinions on foot. Oh, okay. You guys can crash wherever you like. Yeah. He's up. I don't think I've seen you smile that much since we left home. Mom, did you see him? I mean, what a body. Oh, Chris, please. Mom, he's beautiful. I thought you weren't supposed to call a man beautiful. You're not. But in his case, there's no other word. And what would Jeff say? Who's Jeff? What do you got there? What's that? Oh, I mean, are you going to fish or, uh, I mean, the fancy getup, what's all that? Oh, oh, that? oh, this is uh, Gladys' brother, Bob, the chiropractor. He, uh, he takes his uh, sport very seriously. Oh, yeah, he, he buys the most expensive gear you can get, and uh, he feels that the true artist uses only the finest brushes, you know what I mean? You catch fish with that? Sure. One day, one day he caught 15 with this little baby here. That's that. pretty good if you're after pounds of meat. Oh, you wouldn't be bothered by the possibility that I might catch more fish than you. I no, guess. sir. <laughs> I'm not bothered at all. Okay. I came out here to enjoy this lake, your company, and the peace and quiet, uh -huh. if you please. Uh -huh. Hey, miss, where are you going? I'm gonna walk in the woods. I want to get some inspiration for my poem. Pardon me? Well, one of my teachers says that's how Robert Frost got some of his best ideas, so I figure if it worked for him, it can work for me. My daughter, the poet. Yeah, I like that. Now, you be careful. Keep the cabin in view. How am I supposed to get inspired by nature if I stay close to civilization? You don't know the woods, Molly. I don't want you getting lost. Robert Frost obviously didn't have an overprotective mother. A tree's a tree's a tree. Oh, that's terrible. What am I gonna do? Molly! Smile! Thank you. A bird is a bird is a bird. So are they gonna send a jet? What for? Well, how are you gonna get to the New York game on Sunday? I'm not. I won't be playing. You've got to play. They can't beat New York without you. It's not my fault. No pay, no play. What were your names again? Chris. David. Well, Chris and David. You know what I hate doing? Jogging alone. You guys interested? Yeah, me too. Gus, Gus, I I've got another. This feels like a whale. Well, keep your tip up, Joe, and play him. Loosen your drag a little. Don't let him bust your line. Here he is. He is a whale. I see it, I see it. Get him in the net. Be in such a hurry. This baby is thick. Look at that. How's that for a trout, huh? From here, it looks a little like a carp. A carp? That's a carp. Well, it's a good-looking carp. Look at the carp. Just a second, I'm in a, in a John. Jack! 
Just a sec. Fish. Did you catch those? They're caplins. Oh. Are those the ones you caught? Honey, mine are still in the lake. Hey, Zach, you keeping the old bod tuned up? How is it? Uh, considering how beat up it gets on Sundays, I guess. Yeah. You know, it was so painful to you. Why do you play? Let's just say I have a couple of million reasons. Playing the game, one of those reasons? Sure, Gus, I love the game. But the average life for a pro football player is under five years. What if I get hurt? There's no room for sentiment in pro football. It's a business. Why don't you call your dad? Maybe he'd like to come up and spend a little time with us. I love the old man, Gus, but uh, he's a talker. And what he likes to talk about is me. I can't take a chance. Oh, yeah, what chance? Reporters. There'll be hundreds of them here for breakfast tomorrow. Forget I mentioned it. Second one in the brick. Ah, I gotta stretch. You want one? No, no thank thanks. You. Are you uh, much of a dancer? Ah, uh, my foxtrot does a uh, little. You know, I gotta. I'm not a professional, but I'm able to get around a dance floor. Well, my middle name is Two Left Feet, but uh, if you're game, there's a bar in the village. It's got a live band. Hey, Zach, is he your agent? Uh oh, uh, nice Mercedes. And it looks like the mountain came to Mohammed. I didn't think anyone knew he was here. See, I knew they weren't going to let him miss Sunday's so game. what'd they say? That's not the point. I won't. I told you that. Now I mean it. No, David. Why not? If Zach wants you to know something, he'll be the first one to tell you. Come on. Let's all eat. Come on. Come on. Mm -hmm. Birds have it so easy. They never have to walk anywhere. They never have to worry about anyone telling them to comb their feathers. I thought they've got to sleep on tree limbs. That can't be easy. And they've got to spend time in the wintertime trying to find food. They fly south. And they have to eat worms. And they never get birthday parties. Yeah, I guess. What's it called when a person takes time off from their job to do something else? Arthur. It's called a sabbatical. Arthur, come here. Come on, Arthur. Come on. Is that what Zach is doing? Nobody's quite sure what Zach is doing, sweetheart. Well, I was wondering if I could take time off from school to do one of those. I don't think third graders have the option. Hi. What's the good word, girls? We're going for a walk. You want to come with us? Oh, yeah, why well, walk when you can ride? Yeah, I never got an answer from you about dancing. Well, I didn't have much of a chance to answer. Yeah, right. Well, how about tonight? Sure. OK. Great. <laughs> Have a good walk, ladies. See you later. You're going dancing with him? Mm-hmm. Is that all right with you? Is going dancing good enough to be like a date? Well, some people think so. Great. My mom's dating Zach McCullough. The kids at school go crazy. Come on. Let's get on that walk. Leonard goes back to pass. Move it, Bigfoot. Look, 
Here comes the blitz. Oh, you got what? Number seven. Why are they passing when it's obvious the quarterback has bad wheels? Chip Leonard has a decent enough arm. But bad oh, wheels? Legs, Chris. This guy's a turkey. I don't think they David, what's wrong with you? Well, just watch the game, okay? Hey, don't talk to me like that. Okay, okay, I'm fine. I'm sorry. Just watch the game! It's a total wipeout. Well, David, there's always next week. Dan takes the ball, drops back to pass. He's apparently trapped. Not for me, there isn't. The 37-yard line. Now that's what a scrambling quarterback can do for you. And that's why Zach McCullough is so sorely missed by his team today. Looks like your team is getting ready to lose its first game of the season. So I gather. I guess you wish you were out there playing, probably, huh? I think our superstar is sorry that he's holding out. Well, he gets no sympathy from me. Ah, well, come on, Gus. Uh, it's the American way. The boy's entitled to try to negotiate for more money. Well, he may be. I don't know about that. I mean, after all, that's the way sports are today. Doesn't seem right to me. I'll tell you something. What? It's none of our business. That's right. So you ready? Fishing, you mean? Yeah. You go ahead. I got to finish this. It's how I'm paying the rent here, you know. You're not mad at me because I caught more fish, are you? No. You can use my rig if you want. Go ahead. Have a good time. OK. I'll catch up with you. Yes, sweetie. Are there any bears here? Well, if there were, I'd... Molly? I saw something over there. Well, wait right there. Stay there. Don't move. Don't move. Oh. OK, I'm sure it's nothing at all. But I think it's time for us to go home now. Come on, let's go. The cabin's that way. No, no, I'm oh. sure it's this way. Yeah, see? Arthur said so, too, and he's never wrong. Come on. You go ahead of me. Hi, Zach! Yeah. Nice going, Zach. You know how close he came to wiping out? How close? <laughs> really? I thought it was a lot closer than that. Who wants to go for a spin? Oh, let her rip. Ready? Yeah. All right, hang on. I'm gonna let loose. Beat it. Gus, I got everything under control. David, you get off of that thing right now. Come on, Grandpa. Get off. You got no helmet, now get off. <clears throat> Lighten up, old man. There. I told you I'd get us home. There's the lake, but where's the cabin? Well...
Molly, you're as nearsighted as I am. Hey, there they are. Where? Right there, across the lake. Well, at least we know where we are. It's okay. It's a great excuse for why I can't write my poem. Oh, great. That's great. No poem. Thanks, Arthur. Come on. Okay. How could you do that? Look, it was a sure thing. I mean, who knew Zach was going to be playing? Losing your bike on a bet? There's no way you can keep that a secret. It's going to be tons worse when they find out on their own. What'd you do? He bet his bike on a game. The one that my mom and grandpa gave him for Christmas. The New York game? Yeah. So buy a new bike. Unless your mom will never be the wiser. Yeah, sure. With what money? I'll give you some. Oh, really? David, will you get that? If it's my agent, I'm uh, um, here. If it's anyone else, you're just a runner. Okay. My agent's name's Putnam. Hello? Yeah, hold on, sir. It's him. Yeah. So sue me. I'm late. David, you can't take his money. Look, I'll pay you back, okay? Just be quiet. Look, they can't do this to me. Okay, okay. Not over the phone. All right, I'll meet you in the lobby. Zach, look, um, I take an allowance and I work part-time after school. I could pay you back in a year. Hey, don't worry about it, bud. You bet on my team I wasn't there to, to win for you. Oh, uh, Chrissy, will you tell your mom I can't take her dancing? I gotta meet my agent. Is she cool or what? Talk to you later. <laughs> Bed, mister. Oh, this is ugly. It's not even six. What are you doing in here? I have some things to say. Yeah, we'll come back in two or three hours. Now. I don't think you want those people in the house to hear what we got to talk about. Now the kids you lecture to, what do you say to them? What I talk to kids about? This is what you got me out of bed for at 6 o'clock in the morning? That's right. I don't believe this. What do you say to them, Big Shot? That's enough, Gus. You tell them that you're just here for the money? It's not just the money, it's... Hey, pal, your secrets are your own. I don't care. Well, at least we agree on something. We do not. I can't think of a thing. You know, I wouldn't take this stuff from my own father, Gus. I'm certainly not going to take it from you. Dad's got some big ideas about you, kid. I hope he never finds out the truth. Oh, and what do you know about my truth? Only what I see. All right, I'm in trouble. So big deal, who isn't? There's this clause in my contract. It says the team has the right to give me a urine analysis test any time they feel like it. Well, they felt like it last week. I couldn't let them test me. Why not? Because I would have failed. You take and dope. Yeah. You've been doing that around my grandchildren? No, I, I haven't touched this stuff in weeks. I swear, Gus, it's the truth. That's why I'm here. The doctor says that I've got three weeks before my system's clean. What happens then? I pay a hefty fine for walking out. I play ball. We win games again. Everybody's happy. Hey, I made a mistake, you know? I'm no different than a lot of other guys. 
And why do you think I'm here? It's to fix things. You're not fixing anything. You're still lying, you're still cheating. Only now you're deceiving a bunch of kids. I hope out of the friendship that you have with my father that you can keep what I've told you to yourself. I'll decide about that. Oh, Zach. What? Now you stay away from my grandchildren. Hey, Zach, want to throw the football off? <sighs> Zach? Grandpa? Did you say something to Zach to make him mad at me? Not at you, son. He's probably, probably a little sore at me, though. Is it about the money they loaned me? It was not. Grandpa, does that mean that you're not going to tell Mom about the bike and stuff? I'm not going to tell her. How come? Well, I don't figure it's any of my business. I figure that's your problem. If you think she needs to be told, I guess you'll have to tell her. Gus, David, Mr. Kaplan's making us breakfast. I'm going to pass, thank you. How about you, big guy? Your mother, she's talking to you. Mom, could you hang on a second? Mom, can we talk out here for a little bit? Well, honey, Mr. Kaplan is making omelets, and there's a lot of split-second timing involved in that, you know. What's on your mind? Mom? Did you ever make a bet? Me? Oh. <laughs> sure. I've made a wager or two in my time. Why? Well, did you ever bet for... Oh, money and stuff? Sure. Did you ever lose? I bet a woman friend of mine in Fort Wayne one time that I could sell more PTA raffle tickets than she could. And I had to pay her $50. Did you tell Dad? He was pretty angry. But he wasn't as angry as I was. How come you were angrier than Dad? Well, you see, it was because our anniversary was coming up. And your daddy had made some real special reservations at a restaurant that I liked a lot. Then he had to cancel those reservations because the money that I lost was going to pay for dinner. Mom, I, I made a bet with JR on a football game. Your team lost, huh, honey? Mom, I lost my bike. And believe me, I'm a lot angrier at myself than you'd be. Really, I... See, you missed out on dinner, and I'm going to have to walk for the rest of my life. I know, and I swear to you that I will never, ever make a bed again, Mom. I really mean that. Don't say never. The time is going to come, sure as we're sitting here, that you'll be tempted again. Maybe when that happens, you'll think about your bike. How it feels to have somebody else owning it. And then maybe you'll think twice about that bet. Maybe it's a good lesson for you to learn, David. Thanks, Mom. Don't thank me. You're the one who's hoofing it from now on. Come and get it. Coming, Mr. Kaplan. Mm. Get him all the hot, guys. This looks so good. What kind of omelet is it? Fish. Fish omelet? Yep. Oh, my. My. Where's Arthur when you need him? On the porch. Arthur! Right there. Right there. Molly? When is, uh, is Zach gonna come in here for breakfast or what? I'm Mr. Kaplan. I'll go see. All right. Don't let him get cold. Come on. 
Don't let it get cold. Zach? Come on in. Uh, they want to know if you're going to come and have breakfast. Zach, can I talk to you for a minute? Sure, what do you want? I can't take this. Why not? Because I figure that I'm the one who bit my bike. So, I should be the man to lose it. Can I ask you a question? Sure. You know my dad used to come up here? Did he ever take you and throw the football around? Sure, why? I was just thinking how neat it would be. You know, to watch you on TV and be able to turn to JR. He's my best friend. Say to him, my dad used to play catch with Zach McAuliffe. I'm not sure that should be such a big deal, David. I'm just a guy. No, no, no. See, I'm just a guy. And Mr. Kaplan, he's just a guy, but... People like you... You guys are special. What about your grandpa? What's he? He's special, too, I guess. I guess. See you later, Zach. All right, bud. Chris, move a little to your right. You're blocking David. No problem. Is this better? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Uh, you guys, take off your dark glasses, please. Why? I can't see your eyes. All you'll see is me squint. Now, will you please take the picture? Yeah. Hey, Zach. You know, I'm really sorry we didn't get a chance to go dancing. Oh, me too. Yeah, if you want to get in the picture, I'll take the shot for you. Come Thanks, on, yeah. come on. I, I'm coming. I'm, I've got an automatic timer on it. Why don't you get in the picture? We'd love to have you. I'd like that. OK, go stand by, Gus, and I'll frame it up again. Zach, are you leaving? Yeah, I am. Well, they called. You going to go back to the team? No, they didn't call. Will you either. hurry? Yeah, yeah. I better go back and talk to my father. Well, how about that? Are you going to join the team after that? Probably come not. On. Well, I got a little medical problem that needs to be taken care of. Everybody ready? Okay. Right in here. Oh, 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 Next time they're in town, Zach said he'd take me to the game. <laughs> wow, big deal. My dad has season tickets. We, we go to games all the time. Yeah, but when you go, you have to sit in the stands. When Zach takes me, he said that I can sit on the bench with him and the team. No way. It's the truth. Zach promised. <laughs> oh, what a uh, if you don't have a bike, how are we going to go around riding and stuff? I guess we won't. <laughs> That's kind of a bummer. For you, I mean. See, I, I don't want to have to... Jay, are, are you saying that you don't want my bike? Well, all I'm saying is that maybe I could take something else instead of your bike. Something else? I can't imagine what. Uh, maybe something like uh, McCullough's jersey? Well, JR. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, come on, Witherspoon. I'm... Well, listen, I'm giving you a chance to get back your bike. Now, you're not going to go stupid on me, are you? I guess you're right. Just... Thanks a lot. You really are, pal. That really means a lot. Okay, well, I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Well, hi, Jay. Hi, Mr. Witherspoon.
Why did J.R. leave here wearing the jersey that Zach gave you? Mom, I had no choice. It was the only way I could think of to get my wheels back. Give me two. This is the one he wore in the playoffs. <sighs> that was nice. That was really nice. It's the kind of thing we ought to do more often. Well, maybe. Too bad you didn't catch any fish. You see, that doesn't bother me. It doesn't? Catching a fish, that's... That's the end of the affair. Kind of like the bonus. Kind of like a bonus. Did you, uh... Did you read your little girl's poem yet? No, did she finish it? There on the table, if you want to read it. Oh. Maybe I shouldn't read it. Maybe she isn't ready for it to be read yet, no. It's up to you. Yeah. Did you help her with it? I did. Well, that makes her the co-author. So if you were to read it to me, it wouldn't be like prying. You dear. There was a young lady from Wheeling. Lots of people get called for jury duty. Signify by saying, I do. I, I do. do. Oh, this is awful. Sweetie, what happened? What's the matter? Ghost? Don't worry about her. She's a... Miss, can you explain to me why a photographer hired less than a month ago was making almost twice what I make? My roommate helped me to get away tonight. Get away? Madame Zolnikova doesn't know I'm here. I came here hoping that you would help me, but I can see that I'm going to have to resort to stronger measures. You say you don't like your job? I'm saying I quit my job. I'm not supposed to see you. I'm not supposed to see you either, but I'm here, aren't I? was when Monica told Harvey she was leaving him for an older man. But then I couldn't believe she went back to him. Monica didn't have any choice. He had a nervous breakdown because of her. Uh, you're not talking about a third grader, right? No, the love of Monica Farley. We stopped at Bertha's on the way home to watch it. And that stupid soap opera. Monica Farley always looks like she just found a bug in her underwear. She's a very successful prosecuting attorney. 
All right, Grandpa, if the library calls, tell them to hold the book that I requested and that I'll pick it up tomorrow, okay? Okay. Let's see, if Andrea Smith comes by, that's because she's picking up my biology notes that she borrowed. Okay. All right, bye. Chris? Yeah? Watch the keys. Grandpa, I'm so sorry. I don't know where my head is. Now, slow down, honey. Take a little time. Smell the roses. Then watch in the package. It's a present for Valerie. It's a friendship bracelet with my name on one side and hers on the other. Well, I hope we get to meet this Valerie before she goes back to Russia. Well, I'll tell her that. Bye, Grandpa. Goodbye, honey. I love you. Be careful. Bye. Back to Russia? Russia. She's got a friend from Russia? Pen pal. You're kidding. Yeah, they're getting to meet each other today for the first time. Valerie's a piano player. Concert pianist. Same thing. Well, she's out here for a contest at the university. Competition. Fine, tell it your way. Yes, 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 Mother. She is, she is a, a very nice girl. No, Mother, it, it, it is not her big front teeth, Mother. I just don't want to go out to dinner with her. <coughs> uh, yes, sir. Yes, I'll get, I'll get back to you on that, okay? Mr. Uh, Towers. Uh, make it quick, Jesse. I've got a full agenda today. This check just came from the payroll department. Well, if you're having trouble with your withholding, uh, just uh, talk it over with Mrs. Borgman. It's bad enough that I have to deal with inadequate budgets, without motor equipment, and with unrealistic deadlines. But this is a final insult. Well, uh, Jesse, now this, this, this check seems more than reasonable to me. You're right. It's more than reasonable. It's also made out to Frank Bagshaw. Now, can you explain to me why a photographer hired less than a month ago is making almost twice what I make? Now, now wait a minute, Jesse. Now, now, Frank is a very good photographer. I mean, um... Uh, 15 years at the, at the Paris Post. The Paris, Arkansas Post. It's a weekly. Yeah, battle, battleground experience. I've seen the pictures. Come on, three days. On maneuvers with the National Guard. Yes, and he has a household to support. And you live with your father-in-law. And maybe I wouldn't have to if you would pay me what I'm worth. Jesse, I've been looking for you. We need a photographer, quick. Not right now. I'm in the middle of something. I'm sorry, but you're it for now. Towers, if Bagshaw shows up drunk one more time, I'm going to fire him. I don't care if he is your cousin. Now, your cousin? Now, don't jump to any on, conclusions. Your cousin? Now. I'll be back. I'll be back.
Valerie Baranoff. Who are you? Oh, I'm Chris Witherspoon. Valerie and I are friends. You can't be Chris. He is a boy. We are pen pals. You're not Valerie. Yes. This is the American friend I told you of, Chris Featherspoon, my teacher, Olga Zelnikova. Hello. Uh, Valerie said you were a boy. Can you imagine? She thought I was a girl. Well, we need to talk about your performance. Forgive me, we have so much work to do, but you get uh, acquainted now, and uh, I will meet you back at dormitory. Really embarrassed. I never said I was a girl. Valerie's a girl's name. My country. Chris is a boy's name. I sent you a picture of me. A photograph I would have remembered. It must have been lost. All you ever wrote about was music, practice competitions. You never once mentioned boy stuff, you know, cars or sports. How about you? Model planes, spaceships. I'm sorry I took so much of your time here. This for you. Hello, family. Hi, Mom. Well, look at you. You look like you've been down in the mines. Oh, my. I was shooting the fire over the warehouse on Bryan Road. By the time I got there, the fire was in full blaze. Chief Collins let me put on the uniform. I got closer to the flames. Oh, cool. Yeah. And young miss, Valerie. Did she play for you? Valerie's not a her. Valerie's a him. Gosh, you serious? You've been right back and forth for over a year. You didn't know it was a him? Grandpa never came up. You know, the thing is, I feel really stupid. I mean, you write things to a girl you would never write to a boy. I'll bet you do. Well, Mom, it's for you. Me? Mm -hmm. Boyfriend. A boyfriend? Oh, boy, I can't wait. Hello. Oh, hi, Mr. Towers. Well, I'm glad you like them. I thought they were pretty good, too. Yeah, they are good shots. You know, those are, those are mighty kind words. I would also appreciate, in addition to those words, I would appreciate my raise. I'd like to be paid what I'm worth. Mm-hmm. We will, yes, we will. All right. Good night. Well, this is not going very well. I don't think I'm going to get that raise. Mom, if I was you, I'd just quit. Can't quit, honey. I can't afford to. Well, in the meantime, while you still have this job, why don't you start looking for another one? You know, maybe if I'd shot that from a lower angle, it might have, might have been special. What do you want to be, a photographer or a critic? Maybe I'll put it in. Yeah. I guess you'd like it. I wish that you were doing the interview. Oh, you'll be fine. Oh, well. I'll get it. I am looking for Chris Witherspoon. Oh, come on in. Thank you. I'll bet you're Valerie, huh? Yes. <laughs> Chrissy, you have a gentleman caller. I I'm, uh, I'm Chris's mom. I'm Jessie. How do you do? And this is her grandpa. This is Gus Witherspoon. How do you do? Fine, she made you. I didn't hear a car. How'd you get here? I hitchhooked. That's not very safe. Chris? I wasn't sure I could find your house. My roommate helped me to get away tonight. Get away? Madame Zelnikova doesn't know I'm here. For her, this trip is all business. Music, practice, nothing but the competition. I wanted to thank you. Mom, Grandpa? Hmm? Be outside. I want 
could lead you something. Dear Valerie, it's midnight as I write this. I've been working on a term paper for modern history and still have to finish it. My subject is the space race. And as I go over my notes, I think about you. The trouble between our country started before we were born and may not end in our lifetimes. Meanwhile, I'm glad that I have your friendship to remind me that we are more alike than we are different. Love. I guess that could have been written by a boy as well as a girl. P.S. Wouldn't you know it? Big date this weekend, and I'm getting a zit. I could not find zit in my dictionary. It's not important. You're very beautiful. If I'd known that you were a boy, I couldn't have written so personally. All my feelings. It just makes it easier. We know everything about each other. How would you like to go to a pep rally? Excuse me? It's where the school gets ready for a big, important game. Everyone cheers and yells. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's very American. Tomorrow night? Madame Zelnikova, I... Yes. I accept. Television works so fast. We've already missed the first three minutes. Don't worry, it usually does. Good, I want to see what happens. Uh, 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 uh. No, you don't. Not today. Mom, we have to find out if Derek's really in love with Monica. Or if he's just after her money. He's the first man in years who's made her tingle inside. She fainted when he kissed her, and Bertha started to cry. I did not. Then why were you wiping your eyes? They itched. I don't cry about stuff like that. Like some people I know. Well, anyway, Mom, we have to find out what happened. We have to find out about Monica Farley. Molly, I've had my fill of soap operas, and so have you. Now, why don't you girls go outdoors and play, or, or go do your homework, or... I know. Why don't you read a book? You're serious. I am serious. I would like you to grow up knowing there is more to life than just a soap opera. Well, I knew that, Molly. I know, but it won't do any good. Mom likes to win arguments almost as much as Grandpa. I got it! I got it! Mr. Flynn just called. I got the job. I knew you could do that. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. I thought I'd cover a meat of some sort, but first, a word with Mr. Towers. Well, now. Excuse me, can you, can you help me? I'm looking for uh, Valery Baranov. I think we can. I'm uh, Gus Witherspoon. This is my daughter-in-law, Jessie. Hi. And you are? Uh, I am Olga Zelnikova, his teacher. Uh, Valery is supposed to be practicing today, but he has left campus, and I was told that he is involved with American girl, your daughter. Valerie and Chris went to the mall. I, I don't know if you'd call that being involved. Valerie is here for one reason only, piano competition. Oh, I know we know that, but, but I thought it's his first time in America. Doesn't he get one day off? Mrs. Witherspoon, Valeria is in danger of losing the biggest opportunity of his life. I have worked with him for seven years, and I do not want him to be distracted now. I came here hoping that you would help me. I'm sorry, but I can see that I'm going to have to resort to stronger measures. What do you suppose she means by that? She beats me.
Mr. Towers. Mm. Oh. Jesse, what, what are you doing here? I'll come right to the point. Here's a solar calculator you gave me last Christmas. It never did work very well. Well, I mean, that's a good calculator. Nobody else ever complained about it. Here's my press pass, my parking pass, my beeper, and my keys. I am tired of having to scrounge around for equipment. I'm tired of having you tell me I do great photographs and not being given credit for it. And I'm tired of being unpaid. Uh, are you saying you don't like your job? I'm saying I quit my job. No, wait a minute. Now, you're not serious. Now, Jesse, Jesse, don't forget who gave you your start in this town. I mean, is this the appreciation I get? Jesse! Ah, try this one. What? The rowing machine. Come on, get on. What, here? Yeah, sit down. You sure? Don't do it. Okay, put your feet in there. Yeah. Feel like this? Uh huh. <laughs> Take that. Uh huh. Now you slide back and forth. This way. Uh huh. This. All right. <laughs> Not quite like that, no. Okay. <laughs> back okay. straight. Okay. Use like your this? legs. Yeah, yeah. Go slow. Okay. That's it. Now you got it. Wow. Look at that. I thought all California girls were blonde. Why, are you disappointed? No, no. What do Russian girls look like? I only know the girls in my school. Very pale, very serious. Work all the time, go to concerts, practice, study. It's like me. How did you manage to get away from Madame Zanakova today? I told her I wanted to work on exercises. And I didn't fly. Rowing is good exercise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on. <laughs> you have one of these? No. Every future astronaut should have a telescope. Oh, very small to want to go so far out into space. Sometimes I get discouraged. Like it's never gonna happen for me, like it's just a dream. That is where it all begins, with dreams. <laughs> Jesse. Oh, hi there, hi. hi. Um, this is Jesse Witherspoon. We're going to be working together. She's been assigned to the Tribune food section, and I am so pleased. Oh, Mr. Banfield did his best, but it takes a woman to appreciate the way food ought to look. Oh, this is such a splendid idea. The whole home ec department tackling the age-old problem of the perfect jello salad. Mom! Hi, honey. What are you doing here? Oh, you don't want to know. Jesse. Oh, no more? <laughs> oh. Well, we keep it that way. But it hasn't sounded like that in years. <laughs> Where did you learn to play? My grandmother was my first piano teacher. I would go to her house after school and practice till she had to send me home. And when I was 10, she took me to Moscow to audition for the famous Zelnikova. I've lived in the conservatory ever since. It's been a long time since I've been with family like this. Well, I'm, I'm afraid the famous Zelnikova was on to you. She came by here earlier. Really read us the riot act. Kind of had fire in her eye. What's the worst thing she could do to you? She could expel me. She could withdraw me from the competition. I'd better go talk to her. You go with him. Take the car. And let me know if there's anything I can do for you. Okay, thanks, Grandpa. Bye. Wait a minute, here.
Good luck. Don't worry. It's time Madame Zemnikova learns Olga. I am no longer a little boy. Anyway, whatever happens, it was worth it. I love you, Chris. I want to show you something. Maybe you are not aware of hard work and dedication it takes to play fine instruments like this. Of course I am. I'm not exactly stupid. Hours and hours of practice, study, concentration. Probably years of hard work, many more to come. I don't play as well as I used to. But in my day, I was considered fine pianist. I was on my way to a career that might have been... Anyway, I became a good teacher. And in all those years, I have only found one student, one, who might become great. Valerie. He is enormous talent. But he is young. He needs firmness, discipline. And I won't let anything or anyone get in his way. I care about Valerie very much. I wouldn't do anything to hurt him. Not deliberately, I'm sure. Please. I understand that you want to become an astronaut. Think. What if it were Eve of your very first space mission and something or somebody was trying to distract you? Would you be willing to risk your goal for it? I never thought of it that way. In a few days, Valerie will be going back to Russia. You will not be seeing each other again. Would it be such sacrifice to tell him goodbye now and let him concentrate on this music? My dear, you do not want to cost him this opportunity. I won't see him again. I won't talk to him. You have to say goodbye because I can't. Anybody want any more of this pot roast? Not me. No thanks. I'm still sick from all that jello I ate. You? Well, I guess the sooner this meal's over, the better. I'm sorry. I want to bring everybody down. I just can't believe that I didn't ask Mr. Flynn what that job entailed. Well, you probably figured he still wanted you to cover the police calls and the city council meetings. You know that Winifred Salt considers my presence in her food section an answer to her prayers? I mean, she'll never let me move out of that section. At least you're making more money. And if it weren't for that and the fact that I had burned my bridges, I would beg Mr. Towers for that job back. Hello? Yeah, hi, Valerie. Hang on a sec. This is Valerie. I can't talk to him right now. Yes, 
This is not fair to any of us. Hello? Valerie, she's not going to talk to you. Good night. What is the matter with you this morning? That is the third time you miss the arpeggio. Shall we go home on next plane? Is that what you want? All these years, we've worked together and you have trusted me. You must trust me now. Believe me, I know how hard it is. Your heart is broken. But use it. Put it into your music. I didn't even get to say goodbye. We all make sacrifices to get what we want. You have to be strong now, for there will be other sacrifices later, maybe harder ones. Now, go over the movement again. And this time, concentrate. There was one door you forgot to lock. By the little porch. Don't you understand? I'm not supposed to see you. I'm not supposed to see you either, but I'm here, aren't I? <laughs> Give me a hint. Only a little one. Something very, very romantic. Can we play 20 questions? Well, not now. Here comes Grandpa. Are you gonna tell him? No, 
He'd have to torture me first. Hi, kid. Hi. You got ten time. Give me a hand here, will you? Well, he's a secret. She won't tell me. Classified information, huh? Just don't ask me where Chris is gone. The secret must be about Chris and Valerie. Well, I hope they got together. They eloped. Oh, they did. Yeah, see, she broke into the house, and Chris was crying, and he was hugging her, and, and she got her purse and some stuff, and they ran off, and they made me swear not to tell anyone he was here. Wow. Well, come on, let's get these groceries in, because when they get back from eloping, they'll be hungry. Good idea. Word? Not yet. I never did trust that kid from the start. He's also a musician. Musicians are all crazy. You know that, don't you? She loves him, and he loves her. Molly, you should have stopped him. Don't you have some homework? Now go on upstairs and do it, and we'll call you if anything at all happens, okay? I would have liked to see you try to stop him. Well, how am I going to explain a Russian brother-in-law? Yeah, come on in. We need to talk. Yeah, what about? Chris and Valerie. I'm worried. Let Mom do the worrying. That's what she's there for. What if they decide to get married? Will Chris have to go to Russia? Molly, Chris and Valerie aren't going to get married. What if they do? What happens then? Guess you get your own room. Never thought about that. Yeah, just think about all that extra closet space. True. You won't have to wait for Chris to go out of the bathroom in the morning. She does take forever. Yeah. And she won't be taking an allowance, so that means more for us. I knew talking to you would help. I still don't want her to get married. Molly, Chris won't be there to hog up the phone. Let me think about this. I'm uh, looking for Valeri. He's with Chris. Why don't you come in? We'll wait together. Come in. Canada. We could go to a little town in Canada. Canada would be fine. Or North Dakota? Why North Dakota? It sounds exciting. Is that where all the Indians are? Some of them. Sometimes I wish I'd never seen a piano before. You don't really mean that. I have a brother, Leon. He's 10 years older than I. He works in factory, married, has a child. His worries are everyday ones. He's not always... Striving. I know what you mean. Sometimes I wish that I could have been just born more simple. Not wanting as much, you know? Maybe just wanting to be a fisherman. <laughs> What's up there? Catalina. It's a little island. I'd like to see it. Well, the next time you come out, I'll take you there. I may never be back. And if I am, it will be completely different. I'll be playing concerts. You'll be flying jet airplanes. I think about that right now, okay? And you'll meet someone. An American flyer. But if we don't make it to Catalina, or North Dakota, we will always have this night to remember. You know you're going to be very famous. I'll buy all your records. I'm 
some very dark night, I will look up into the sky. And I will see a little moving point of light. And I will know you're on your way to the stars. I'll wait. Could have prevented this. Maybe I could have if I'd wanted to. Valeria is like my own son. He was ten years old when I first saw him play. Such little boy, but such big talent. Marvelous hands, good ear. But I could see that it was all too easy for him. He needed to stretch himself. He needed discipline. Don't you think a young man needs love, too? <laughs> love. Love can ruin a career. I know. I had that choice myself once. Do you want Valerie to have to make it? What do you mean? Look, I don't know a lot about music, but I do know about raising children. Discipline is important. You can't stifle them, though. They... You said Valerie feels like your son. Aren't you afraid if you keep on like this? He'll come to hate you and come to hate his music? I didn't come here to be lectured. I'm not like. Olga. I'm talking about plain, old-fashioned common sense. How many people can play the pieces that Valerie can play? Maybe thousands. Then what separates a great pianist from everybody else? Qualities that are difficult to put into words. Difficult for you, maybe. I call it heart. And Valerie's never going to have that in his music unless you let him live, unless you let him feel. The technique won't matter anymore. Welcome home. Well, I thought you'd eloped. I was beginning to wonder myself. I'm sorry. It is my fault. No. Mom, we just want some time alone together. I didn't think we would be that long. Where's everybody? Sound asleep by now. Whole day's practice. Madame Zonikova, I'm grateful that you are my teacher. But you cannot have all of my life. We will work twice as hard tomorrow. David, we're ready to go. I'm coming! Uh, wait a minute. Where's your tie? Oh, come on, Mom. I don't have to wear a tie, do I? We're going to a concert. You want to look rad, don't you? Mom, this is not rad. A tie. Go on. You big sister ready? She's been ready for an hour. She's in the kitchen, calming her nerves with a peanut butter sandwich. I'll get her out here. I'll back the car out. Hello, Mom. Hello, Dad. Hello, Mom. Hello, Dad. 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 Hello, I'm uh, offering you your job back. Take him for all you can. Good day, sir. Um, there's a biker's convention coming to town, and I need some really good action shots. 
Well, I'm not sure you can even afford my price. You know, I'm on the staff of the Tribune now. Yeah, well, um... Well, maybe a, a raise is in order. And, of course, uh, those supplies and equipment. Yeah, well, we're thinking about upping the budget in that area anyhow. Okay, sometimes, yeah. And then there is the matter of photo credit. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to say to my cousin Frank, but... Well, Jesse, what, what is, what is it going to be? Well, I, I really appreciate your offer. And I'm going to think about it and tell you tomorrow. Uh, please make it yes, Jesse. We, uh, we need you. And I'm going to make sure that you get one of those uh, new calculators. to Valerie now. Well, he leaves tomorrow morning for Ohio. Plays a couple cities back east. It's part of a young artist series. Then he goes back home. He has a couple concerts out there. Then school. I'm gonna miss him. I don't know. Oh. He gave me this. It's the medal he won. To give to you. He eat your heart out, Monica Farley. I don't deserve this. Sure you do. Chris. You know, you gave him something he'll have forever. What? The sweetest memory a person can have. Their very first love. Stay tuned for the family weekend movie, Where the Red Fern Grows, starring Wilford Brimley. A young man returns home from war with a broken spirit, but the love of family and friends helps him feel whole again. Coming up next on the Odyssey Channel.